Throughout my life, I heard plenty and plenty and plenty of stupid shit. I heard people claim that the moon landings were fake. I heard people claim that vaccines gave you autism. I heard various unsubstantiated religious claims. However, none of these claims are as stupid as trying to argue in favor of child fucking. There's a video that's produced by Amos Yi where not only does he argue in favor of child fucking, but he also argues that age of consent laws should actually be eliminated and that apparently babies can also fuck adults. By the way, this is not the first time that Amos Yi argue in favor of child fucking. Back in 2016, he made a video talking about how child pornography should be legalized and also in 2016, me and a bunch of people tried to argue against that in a hangout with him. However, we ultimately fail because he's still talking about this shit now in 2017. The purpose of this video is not necessarily to convince Amos Yi that child fucking is wrong, but rather to convince the people who is on the fence why child fucking is wrong. So, uh, let's begin. First, we need to agree on just one thing, that sexual abuse is not determined by age, but instead on whether or not the relationship involves consent. Most people would make the absolute broad generalization that any kid that is below the age of 12 are not able to consent to sex. But then one day, a 42-year-old adult comes along and says that while he was 10 years old, he had a perfectly consensual sexual relationship with a 30-year-old adult. 10-year-old him was not traumatized afterwards, the relationship was perfectly fine and consensual, and both of them enjoyed the sexual relationship. So do you think that that kind of relationship should not happen? That just because the child was below 18, that relationship that was perfectly harmless should be considered child rape? No! The problem with Amos Yee's argumentation is that he's attempting to start with the premise first, i.e. child fucking is okay, and trying to work around the conclusion to prove that child fucking is okay. Essentially, he's doing a fallacy that is known as begging the question. This line of reasoning is very disappointing, mostly because Amos G have made videos not only against Christians, but also Muslims, and he mocked the various ideas and logical fallacies that both Muslims and Christians use for their arguments, yet here he is doing the exact same thing that he criticized the Christians and Muslims for doing. To give you guys a better understanding of what I'm talking about, imagine if a Christian, for example, argues that the Bible is true, and then you ask them, well, geez, how do you know that the Bible is true? And the Christian will say, well, it's because the Bible says that the Bible is true. So essentially, this is the exact same situation of what Amos he is doing. Now replace the Bible is true because the Bible says so with child fucking is okay because Nambla says so. And essentially, that's the exact same argumentation that Amos Yi has. By the way, for those who live out South America, NAMBLA stands for the North American Man Boy Love Association. Essentially, they're pro pedophile group. We know that child fucking is wrong due to the overwhelming scientific evidence against it. According to scientific studies, it shows that a person's brain stopped developing by the time they hit 25. When babies are born in the world, they have no idea or pre-knowledge about sex and sexual activities. Essentially, babies and kids, they have to be taught such concepts in schools before getting a general idea of what the said subjects are about. Typically in America, we teach kids at grade six about various body organs and how their functions, 
And by the time they hit eighth grade, we talk about various sexual activities and the impacts that it has on a person's body. Not only that, but kids, they do not develop any sort of sexual urges, mostly because they don't really have that kind of urge mentally. By the time a person's a teenager, essentially they go through something that is known as adolescence. During puberty, not only do teenagers experience a bodily change by growing taller and growing breasts in pubic hair, but also mentally they feel a difference in regards to sexuality. During this period, which by the way, I am not referring to that time of the month that women have, essentially teenagers mentally and physically, they develop urges as well as affectionness towards other teenagers that happen to look attractive to them. When you compare that to kids, mentally and physically, Kids are not able to consent to such actions, mostly because kids do not think about sex, and the only time that kids think about sex is when they start to turn into teenagers and begin to develop these feelings. Now I am absolutely certain that we should not discriminate against pedophiles. Our society's treatment of pedophiles is inhumane and horrendous. Oh my gosh. A pedophile is simply defined as an individual who has a sexual attraction to children. That's it. It doesn't mean he's going to molest children. It doesn't even mean he's going to act upon his sexual urges. All he has is the non-violent sexual attraction to children. If you have the desire to rape children, then yeah, that's bad. But most pedophiles, like most people, do not want child abuse. Most pedophiles and people in NAMBLA absolutely condemn rape and child abuse. Note how Amos Yi is using manipulative language to mislead people. And one second, he argues that he's not in favor of child rape and child abuse and neither is NAMBLA. However, at the very same time, he does not realize that he actually is arguing in favor of child rape and child abuse. This particular fallacy is commonly known as ambiguity. Based upon the scientific data, we do in fact know that the overwhelming majority of kids who have sexual relationships with adults ended up traumatized as a result of that situation. Not only does this stuff is traumatizing for people who actually suffer underneath it, but also in some cases can in fact lead to death. During the transition between childhood and adolescence, it is said that girls can have their period as early as 11 years old. And essentially because they can have their period and start to menstruate, it's a potential chance that a girl that young of an age can actually get impregnated by somebody from that action. Both physically and mentally, girls that young of an age cannot handle such responsibility, both physically and mentally. Physically, the childbearing is basically virtually painful because their body is not developed yet, and mentally, they depend largely by their parents to stay in their house and to also take care of their kids and themselves. They're not ready for the real world. But apparently, according to you, that kind of stuff is okay because apparently they're mentally and physically able to do that kind of stuff even though the data shows otherwise. If a child and an adult have consensual sex, they both film it and they both agree that it's fine for the footage to be on the internet, there's absolutely nothing wrong done. Why should it be illegal? In the US, for producing child porn, an adult gets a minimum of 15 years in prison and a maximum of 30. That is fucking insane! Even worse is most countries criminalize simply possessing child pornography. Possessing child pornography, a completely non-violent act, whether you viewed it based on sexual attraction or non-sexual curiosity, 
In the U.S., you get a minimum of five years in prison and a maximum of 15. What the fuck? And even if I gave you the benefit of the doubt and said that, okay, all child sex is rape, and so all child pornography is essentially footage of rape, is it wrong to upload or view footage of child rape? No! Child pornography should not be legalized, and the main reason why it should not be legalized is mostly due to the fact that the kids in the video are being exploited and are victims, whereas adult porn stars are not victims and are fully capable of making adult decisions both mentally and physically. Many people are willing to reduce the age of consent to whatever subjective opinion they have on how much brain development a child should have before they are capable of consenting to sex, whether that age be 12, 13, or 14. Now I would argue and ask, why do you think that kids and babies aren't able to consent to sex. The main reason why we have age of consent laws is to protect victims from the perpetrators that actually rape kids and babies. And the main reason why we have such laws is because of the scientific data that shows that kids and babies do not have enough life experiences, both mentally, physically, emotionally, to make such choices and that's why we have such laws. This is the video response that I have in regards to this video. I am not going to respond to any more because I will just repeat myself. But until next time you guys, take care and I'll see you guys next time.